Hey everyone, uh, recently I've gotten a lot of questions about the new NX Sketcher and uh, just people email me, people that I know in the industry, friends of mine, and I know I haven't done a video in forever, please forgive me, um, but I'll make a few regarding the new NX Sketcher and um, I'll be quite honest with you, once you get used to it, it is magic. It takes a minute to get used to. It's like anything else. It's a new tool. Uh, you're doing things a little differently, but um, in this latest version of NX, I think this is 2008 is what I'm using. Let me make sure. Go about NX. Let me bring this over here. Yep. Version 2008. The sketcher I feel is super fantastic. Okay. Now, when I go into the sketch icon, first thing you'll notice is, I'm gonna break the plane, that I have these principal planes. I got my top, right, front. This is kinda nice, give you an idea of how things are oriented, okay? Now, if you don't like those, you can turn off the principal plane display right over there. So, when I go in and select the plane that I want to sketch on, go over here, it'll tell me that, well, that's where I am sketching. And this is nice because this word, sketch, is oriented to the plane I'm going to sketch on. This becomes my sheet of paper. So I'm going to hold the shift key down, deselect that plane, and I'm going to pick this plane up here. You can see it's off of the origin and it's at an angle. And once again, you'll notice this sketch orients itself to my horizontal direction. All right, so this is telling me how the orientation is going to appear once I select OK. You'll also notice because I selected a axis system, okay, I've got, I selected the axis, it inferred the horizontal reference off of my um, in this case, the X, because I picked the XY plane, and inferred the axis system off of, or the axis direction, horizontal direction off of the axis system, and the origin point off of that axis system. So that's telling me that the sketch is now being driven completely by that axis system, which I'm a big fan of. This is how I would set my sketches up uh, regardless. I would position an axis system, attach, my sketch to said axis system and dimension off of that. So oftentimes that axis system is your datum. Maybe you have a datum location out in space and everything wants to be di dimensioned or referenced to that datum. So if I do move the datum, then everything updates with it. Now, obviously, if I have external references that I'm dimensioning to based off of how those external references are created, um, you'll get uh, updates to the model. So if it's linked to the axis system, those will move with it. If it's linked to an external reference not part of the axis system, it'll stick right there with that element. So this I am a big fan of. I select OK and now I enter in the sketch. Now note, the datum coordinate system, that datum system is now hidden. I can show it if I want to, but once I go in to my sketch it displays my horizontal vertical axis of the sketch and the origin point, okay? So all of these elements are now things that I want to constrain to. Okay, so when I go in there and make whatever geometry I'm gonna make, in this case, I'm gonna keep it simple. I'll start out with just a couple of rectangles. One, I really love this uh, shaded a view for the profile that's in this case you'll see that it is uh, completely enclosed this holds water per se because it holds water it shades up the view does the same thing in this one and it's a little darker where the two overlap so this gives me an indication of what's going on with my profiles I'm gonna go in there and trim all right I'm gonna trim this now note as soon as I open up that profile that shaded goes away See that? It's a technically an open profile. Now, as soon as I close that profile, that shaded uh, bit comes back. All right. 
Now, I'm not going to cover everything there is to know about the sketcher here. I'm going to have to do several videos, but I just wanted to give my initial joy with what's happened to Sketcher. I think in a lot of ways it's gotten better. Again, it, it took a couple of weeks to get used to the new tool. It's a new tool. It's like wearing a new pair of shoes. You put on a new pair of shoes. They're not going to be comfortable at first. They're going to hurt. You got to break them in. And the moment you break them in, after you use it a few times, you begin to understand and feel and use, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, those shoes or the tools or whatever it is you're using. So, um, one of the things that I really like about this are the relations. Okay, now um, I've gotten into the habit of just create persistent relations because I like to see my relations. You don't have to do that um, because they're really easy easy to uh, break, remove, get rid of. So I'm just going to create a persistent relation. And so when I pick this line, you'll note that it just gives me a dimension. And then if I pick the axis, you'll note it gives me another dimension. And then I have my relations set up here. Okay. So these are basically your constraints. Now I can either change that dimension or I can say, well, I want to make this collinear. So now it's collinear. I'll do the same thing between here and here. Come over here, collinear. Yes, they've changed some of the names of the, we'll call them constraints for now. But um, th these relations have some different names. They still work basically the same, right? Remember, you had line on line and point on line, all the other stuff. Now it's just, you have collinear or you have coincident. Okay, this is more in line with industry standards for naming conventions. Okay, so there's a bit more commonality uh, with what's going on for naming conventions. So I find that very useful. Again, it's just getting used to the tool. So now when I say coincident, coincident means coincident means coincident. Always across the board. Now I'm going to put in a dimension. I'm going to pick this line. So there's my dimension. It's 86 millimeters. It's green. The green denotes that um, it's a suggestion, right? I don't have to go over here and pick a rapid dimension. I don't have to pick anything to say, all right, I need to apply an, a, an a dimension. I'm just picking the line and those are the dimensions or in this case, just a singular dimension that could potentially apply. Now I pick that dimension and all right, I want this to be 100. And for the first dimension in the sketch, when I select enter, I'm always going to get this question. Do I want to scale the sketch? So basically, if I drew something really large and enter in a small dimension, it'll scale everything appropriately. Or if I drew everything small and I have to put in a large dimension, right? That, that never happens to anybody. Never, right? Never that you've accidentally drawn something big or drawn something small. So this is brilliant. So if I say, yes, I want to scale it, all of the other lines in the sketch automatically scale. So now that line is constrained, it turned black, positionally constrained, geometrically it's constrained, length of it is constrained, it is 100. Now notice this doesn't have a P value. So what that denotes is that value is only going to be seen as a relation inside of the sketch. When I exit out of the sketcher, that won't be seen. Okay, you know when I go into the details tab over here? So I'll put in another dimension. I'll come over here, pick my dimension. Let's say I want this to be 85. And go like that. Oh, and I realize, oh, this is a dimension that I may want to see. I'm going to right mouse click on it. I'm going to say add remove expression. Now that I've done that, there's my expression value. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick this line and pick this line. And then I'm going to tell it to be equal. And I'm going to pick th this line. Now, if I give this dimension, you'll see it is fully constrained. You'll note down here, it says sketch is fully defined. Two of these do not have the p-value, one of them does. I'm going to finish out of the sketch, 
and when I click on the sketch, just single click, you'll notice I have that p-value. So this is another feature that I personally absolutely love. I know people are going to grouse about it, but see the value in it. The value is I don't have to go through and navigate through all of the dimensions that I know I'm not going to have to really mess with. Okay, so like in this case, if I know the only dimension I'm going to mess with is going to be this guy, I can come over here and just like that, make my modifications without having to mess around with all of the other dimensions in that list. Right, if you have a very busy sketch, that could be a very tedious thing. So now you can simply give a p-value to the most important dimensions. Another way you can do your work, like I said, I'm a big fan of it. Let me go ahead and uh, make this my current feature. I'm going to offset a datum plane. Uh, let's go way over here. Come back to my sketch. Double click on my sketch. Um, let me go ahead and delete this. I'm going to pick my sketch. I'm um, sorry, my plane, my datum plane, my datum plane, my datum plane. I can't pick my datum plane. Why can't I pick my datum plane? Well, we know how sensitive NX is to selection intent. So you have to make sure you have your selection filter set up correctly. Right now it's within active sketch only. So now I, if I want to pick something within just the work part, let's say I'm working in a large assembly and I only want to pick something in the work part, I can do that. Or I can specify within the entire assembly. So now I can pick this datum plane. I'll pick this line. I'll tell it that I want them to be collinear. It's fully constrained. I know it's fully constrained or I should say fully defined, my bad, pardon me guys. Um, and this is just the uh, included datum plane telling you this has been included. This is your way of knowing that something has been used as an external reference and included into the sketch, which is very nice. So now, rather than modifying the sketch, I just modify the plane. So there's always ways to go about doing these things. But if you wanted to modify the sketch, you can still modify that sketch. So again, it's how you want to go about doing things. So that's just a brief intro into Sketcher. Well, actually, let me take a step back. Now, this is this is one of the things I really like about um, using these uh, coordinate systems. So if I come over to the coordinate system and I say edit parameters, for example, I can now take this, t twist it, tweak it, move it around, whatever it is I want to do, and the sketch goes right with it, okay? I don't have to have extra selections. I don't have to, have, when I'm picking the sketch and placing it, I don't have to do all sorts of craziness. Just pick that datum coordinate system, that axis system, and then you, know, I've, you saw my offset datum plane. You saw the way I created that sketch. Everything goes right along with it. So they've really, the good people at Siemens have really streamlined what happens and how these things happen with the sketch, with the new relations and uh, the new inputs and in interface with the sketcher. And again, I'll be talking a lot more about this as we go through the sketcher over the next several weeks. But uh, I got to say, now that I've used it a little bit, I'm a big fan and I find it difficult to go back to the other sketcher when I have to use an older version of NX working on old client data or something like that. And um, I far prefer this method of sketching. Again, it just takes a minute to get used to it. It's like walking in a new pair of shoes. It hurts at first, but after a little bit, they fit super comfortable and you don't want to wear your old shoes anymore. It's just the nature of the thing. So give it a shot. Give it a little patience. It's a really good tool.